Sam, thank you so much for, for joining us. Hi, everyone. Firstly, thank you so much, Ben, uh, from Pivot World for having me on today. And uh, it's such a pleasure to be able to share my story with the audience. So thank you so much. Well, look, it's a very interesting story and I don't want to steal your thunder, but um, there's uh, there's some pirates involved there We uh, all the way to eight figure business and then back to the drawing board um, to a global uh, powerhouse that you've got now across your business unit. So um, I'm keen. Can you just run us through a bit of that background and how you ended up where you are today? I, I started both uh, my first business in 2009, both ingredients due to necessity. Uh, that is like when I started, I didn't even know what the word entrepreneurial mean because uh, I started the business because my husband's business uh, went under in 2009. And I, I actually encouraged my husband in two, like few months later that, to re that if I could restart again. So I would say without the, the help of my family and, um, and you know, like the my, my children inspire me as well because back then they were only uh, four to six. So I want to actually always be an inspiration to my children. So for me, it was a necessity to get our feet back on the ground. So like I said, if I had to start the business by myself, it would be hard. So with my family, it was like a lot of people helping me to move that mountain. So for me, in the beginning, it was just, you know, a starting platform just to get the, at the family just back to normality. That's how I started Bird Ingredients, how I found it in 2009. Well, wow. and and now you're operating in Australia, looking at, you know, export markets and um, the business is a powerhouse. You supply to big uh, FMCG brands. Some of, I think Woolworths is, is a big customer uh, of yours and uh, all of the stuff that comes along with that. Can you tell us a bit about how that growth came together? And was there a particular sort of tipping point where where things started accelerating? How did you set yourself up for success there? In 2016, uh, I started the new brand Coco and Lucas Kitchen, which is a junior's foodies um, um, range for kids between four to 12 years old. So I saw a gap in the market for that, that that uh, age group. So whatever I do, Ben, I always do make sure that I always create a new innovation category. Uh, because I don't want to offer what everyone's offering, but I would like to actually do deep research and see what's the missing gap. So I started the Junior Foodies, uh, inspired my, my daughter, uh, Coco, who is a fussy eater, and my nephew, who has all these, um, you know, he couldn't eat things that contains gluten, lactose, lupin, seafood, soya, fish. Mm -hmm. So that's how the brand was born, because I see that there's a lot of food for babies, between six months to two years old, and there's an abundance of range for adults, but there was that missing gap of junior foodies between the age group of four to 12. So without, you know, I, I really not, didn't know what I've got myself into because I didn't even know what FMCG means, essential goods. So FMCG means fast moving consumer good. So, you know, to service, I all I wanted to know is, I wanna be on that Woolworths truck. Uh, I would like to be in that trolley in the supermarkets and I just love working with Woolworths. So I started with 200 stores, 300 stores in Melbourne. That that wasn't even my home ground. So uh, it took us a year to, to get into like, uh, the second state I've got was Perth and then I've got Adelaide. Then I've got Northern Territory, Queensland, Tasmania and then Sydney. So gradually from 300 stores to 960 stores. So I, I, I believe that Woolworth is, you know, a very, you know, prestigious uh, retailer in Australia. Um, it, it has a good reputation and we have a lot of experience working with Woolworth doing their private label for the last 25 years. So uh, for, for me to go from retail to export it was a gradual of five years to six years so to do this i have been overseas a lot to do a lot of research because you know when you're supplying another country you really have to understand the individual 
culture intelligent and psychology of each country so i have been very very lucky to be on a seven month program with the new self world treasury and investment uh, for seven months to learn about ip registered trademark labeling uh you know all the the different hs code uh so you know and they help me with matching bias so i would say for this journey it's really taking me between seven months to two years because at the end of the day to get a client overseas we have to understand that they are also investing a lot into into my brand so i'll give you an example i'm going to be exporting to uk and uk is going to be licensing out my brand and for them to just just to carry my brand. So I've got to print all the packaging in the UK version. And just mm -hmm. to pa print the packaging in the UK version for, for 14 SKU, that will cost just the packaging alone is 200 grand for them. Wow. And they spend a lot of money on marketing. So, you know, it's about for me, when I get a new client band, it's a lot of learning about them a lot learning about my, they learning about me and how can I work together with them to how best we launch the product in that new market. So I would say uh, the compliance and everything, uh, that that's how I've got into, uh, you know, it, it wasn't just about, oh, I want to export. It's a lot of background work with my team behind the scenes.